Hey guys, good afternoon. How you doing? How you all doing? I'm making this video because I'm a I'm a huge Spider Girl fan, but I'm also a fan of characters that seem really obscure and don't get enough coverage in mainstream comic book press. Spider Girl, the May Day Spider Girl, not that um, knockoff Arang uh, Anya Corazon. No, uh, I really like Spider Girl, created by Tom DeFalco and Ron Friends, because. This is a book with a strong superhero female lead that's been published for over 10 years. I mean, she's no longer getting new stories, at least not any that I know of. And I'm a big fan of the work done by these two create. well, um, two creators? I think there was one more, but I can't find his name. It's been a while since I put my head in the books. It's been quite a bit. The last story published by Marvel involving the Mayday Spider-Girl character was the um, Spider-Girl The End, at least the character in her own book. Spider-Girl The End in an issue of Spectacular Spider-Girl. There were two stories. The Who Killed Gwen Riley um, a set of issues, and then The End, in which uh, Mayday's sister April is in the future where she, um, she fights symbiote clones that were produced from Venom and Carnage. I can't remember the whole story. It, like I said, it was a while ago, but in the future, she time travels back to a point where Mayday had seemingly been killed in a building uh, when it exploded, and uh, she tries to save her by convincing her past self to let go of her anger toward her sister. Um, there was two Spider-Girls at, at the time. There was Mayday Parker, and then there was April Parker. They were trying to figure out which one was the clone. I'm pretty certain that... I'm, I'm pretty sure that April Parker was the clone because she was a symbiote hybrid, and she's nothing like the Mayday that we read in the comics. So yeah, there were two Spider-Girls at a certain point. It was basically a sequel to the Clone Saga. Uh, which Spider-Girl was the clone and which one was the real, um, the real incarnation? I'm actually holding an issue of Spider-Girl in which she fights uh, Peter Parker's, uh, one of his deadliest enemies, the Carnage symbiote. Cletus Cassidy's not in the story because the book actually takes place 10 or 15 years into the future of the original continuity. Well, uh, it, it's its own universe, but it's supposed to be an idea of what if Spider-Man got older and he had a daughter and she became a teenager and she took up his powers and his mantle as a Spider-Girl. And she fought some of his enemies who either have died, gotten older, aged a bit, who got rusty, or were back on the streets being criminals. It's basically, it's not Batman Beyond and it's not Spider-Man 2099. It's actually just a modern, almost like a modern day story. It's just disconnected by about a few years, going a few years forward in time. And right now, I'm actually reading this amazing, well, yeah, ama I'll call it amazing, uh, an interview with the original creators where this character came from a Marvel comic what if issue issue number 105 back in 1999 I think or 1998 or 1999 uh, the like this book was huge this was basically I don't want to call it spider Gwen before spider Gwen because I, I know a lot of people have respect and interest in that character but mayday mayday to me is kind of an OG uh, spider girl spider woman uh, from back in the day and i don't think she gets enough love marvel there's two branches to this in my opinion marvel likes the spider girl character enough to oh and that's what we're gonna get to this soon i'm gonna expand on this marvel likes the spider girl character enough to print a new trade paperback in her series that's right for the first time in several years we're actually going to be getting a uh, trade paperback epic collection of spider girl which collects issues let me see if i can pull that up for a second um, i need to find the amazon entry i actually have a picture of it uh, give me a second okay here we go spider girl the complete collection volume one it comes out it comes out on august 7th of this year 2018 it collects What If Issue 105. It collects Spider-Girl Issue 1.5. I, I didn't even know Marvel did 1.5s back then. I kind of thought like it was like the decimal system. Kind of a new thing, but I guess it's not. It also collects issues uh, Spider-Girl 1 through 15 and the 99 annual. You know, I, I purchased the digests of the Spider-Girl uh, miniseries. I'm, I mean, not miniseries. The ongoing. 
I purchased the book, uh, the little digest. Digests are basically like manga-sized versions of storytelling. It, it goes from left to right, and in, they're in color. And I have them. I have volumes 5 through 11, and I don't know what I'm going to do with them. I actually don't want them anymore because of this announcement. Because I'm interested in what happens with Spider-Girl going forward enough to get a complete collection. Maybe she'll get more than one collection because there are some comics that were never put in a trade paperback. Uh, and the Digest run never finished. It only went up to Spider-Girl issue 72, if I recall correctly. Aside from that, I, I'm really interested in uh, talking about this interview or rather reading parts of this interview to get you guys interested i don't know if it will do anything because there's like four different voices here there's newsarama there's tom defalco there's ron friends i believe and pat oliffy that was the one i was missing earlier yeah there's three creators i believe two of them are artists one of them is a writer uh, actually that's not that that's not entirely true i believe all three of these guys had input on the direction of Spider-Girl going forward. I just want to, like, I'm going to keep this video moving forward as well. I just want to say that I hope I get to meet Tom DeFalco at a convention one day. I would love to talk to him about Spider-Girl and why the book got canceled. Allegedly, the book kind of ended because the sales just weren't there. And I think that, and this book ended in 2010, if social media had been stronger back then, if social media wasn't just the genesis of the platforms uh, rising back in the day, I think that we would have had a lot more attention brought onto this comic. One of the reasons I like talking about good comics instead of bad ones is because like these books give you a lot of joy. They're not stuck in identity politics or political correctness on either end of the spectrum, whether it's good or whether it's bad. I just want to read a quality story by Marvel, and I'm really glad that these people put out as many comics as they did. When you read these books, especially as a teenager, you feel like you can relate to Mayday, and, and it's almost weird for me to say this, but you can learn a little bit about like the how like I, I don't I don't want <laughs> I'm having trouble trying to say this but I guess you could learn from a female lead's point of view what she's like what are her interests her hobbies is she is she's good at sports I mean don't don't get me wrong I'm not mistaking a comic book in an in interaction with the comic book as a replacement for an interaction with the person it's just that when you read these books you get attached to a degree of surrealism that you find out it's not very it's not all that fake or surreal it's actually based on real um interactions with people sometimes like i mean spider-man is mostly written for like if you ask me the spider-man comics of 1960 were written by teenage written for teenagers and i guess the millennial oh, i wouldn't call them millennials but the young people of back then who were able to relate to being that character they didn't have enough money the girls didn't like him he wasn't a very popular person he wasn't well known he was marginalized he was uh he was not given positive attention for his achievements things like that and when you're a teenager experiences can be tough because um a lot of clicks there's a lot of bullying there's a lot of ways to single people out you know some teenagers don't get invited to as many places as they'd like to be they don't make many friends growing up it can be really sad but there's also positive points you know you get to discover who you are you get to find out what you want to do and i think spider girl honestly is a better book than ultimate spider-man I, I, I'm not a big fan of Brian Michael Bendis. I think his material is highly overrated, and I think that Marvel shouldn't be trying to redefine the flagship of their character, who is an adult, who is currently an adult, by making him a man-child and a, a teenager who just won't grow up. To me, Spider-Girl tells better stories than Ultimate Spider-Man can. It's just my personal opinion, and I didn't make this video to be about um, what comic I dislike. I'd rather just focus on the comics I do enjoy. I want to read to you some clips from the interview. Oh, not clips, um, some excerpts. Tom DeFalco states that, I think our, uh, the team and I did our job by crafting a world around Mayday that seemed real. We surrounded her with an interesting supporting cast who seemed to have their own lives and desires yet told us something about mayday uh pat oliffy 
goes on to say that I think when Tom and Ron put the concept together, they really hit on something. I connected Mayday with Mayday just like our fans did. Are being able to tell superhero compelling stories and adventures about interwoven and engaging stories about Mayday's life as a teenager with her special gifts, I think created something the fans could really get into. Plus, think thanks to all the diehard Spider-Girl fans, we were able to tell these stories consistently month after month for years, and the impact that the consistency had on the Spider-Girl fans can't be underestimated. Spider-Girl ran for 10 years with one regular writer and two regular artists. That is what builds a following. Damn. He put the, he put the money right there. Like, he... he Basically, he basically put the the like the words. The, like he summed it up the best way he could and the best way he did. I'm glad. Some of this interview goes on to say that Mayday is an open and optimistic person, a ray of sunshine who brightens the lives of everyone around her. I like spending time with people uh, like that. It's hard to pick one thing. The um, and that was Defalca who spoke just now. Um, one of the artists, Pat O'Liffy says that it's hard to pick one thing. Of course, getting to work with Tom DeFalco is a big plus. I've always enjoyed working with Tom, a great writer and a great guy as well. Having had a lot of fun drawing the teenage adventures of Peter Parker and Untold Tales of Spider-Man, getting the chance to draw the adventures of his teenage daughter felt very comfortable to me. Love drawing all the cool MC2 heroes and villains, but I might have enjoyed drawing Mayday's school home life even more. And Ron Friends, one of the other artists, um, the team, working with the with Tom is a joy. Becoming friends with Mr. Sal Bushima is an honor, and the whole team from colorist Mr. Bruno Hang to our letterer Mr. Dave Sharpie to our fantastic editors from Tom DeFalco to Tom Brennan to and everyone in between, even the one that didn't understand why Marvel continued to publish Spider Girl, were professionals all and were irreplaceable parts of whatever success Spider Girl can claim. Okay, I I want to read the rest of the interview, but I don't want to take away from like Newsarama having published this. I just want to show you guys that there's uh, that there's a really cool. I don't want to say revival. I want to say like she's obviously off hiatus. Something is coming back. Who knows? Maybe with all these sales that I hope the comic gets the trade paperback and some of these other books, I hope that we see. A revival in the series. I would like another Spider Girl. It'd be like, like how many? This is the equivalent of several seasons having gone on in a television show, and, and that's what I love about comics that last over a hundred issues. Because Spider Girl went from one to one hundred, and then got rebooted as the Amazing Spider. Well, not rebooted, retitled as the Amazing Spider Girl issues one through twenty-five. I think I the only trades I have right now on me are the Carnage trade which collects issues number 7 through 12 of Amazing Spider-Girl and I have the first trade of Amazing Spider-Girl that collects 0 through 6 but I think I think it goes up to 5 trades it might go down to 25 or 30 issues I'll try to double check maybe I'll annotate it in the video or maybe I'll just I don't know make uh, maybe I'll write it on the uh you know the the description because I'm going to put a link to this interview. I'm also going to put a link to the Amazon page where people can pre-order the Spider Girl Epic uh, Collection, and I think that's about end the end of it. I do know that there are other people out there who could explain Spider Girl better than me. I haven't really delved into the books too much, but I would love to help support the sales and the publicity of Spider Girl in my own way. And if anybody has any ideas, any suggestions, tell me like what I could say, what I could do, or I'm probably doing a good job already, and I hope I am. I wish Tom DeFalco and Ron Friends and some of the other Spider-Girl uh, creators, some of the staff, I, I would like them to see this video. Uh, I, I don't know how many Spider-Girl fans there are because uh, there's a forum. Let me see if I can pull it up here. There's a forum... It's called, let me see if I can find the site, Spider-Girl Message Board. That's all I could find. I could probably look for the name of the website 
um, and link the text in the description below, because I think that forum is one of the reasons that Spider-Girl should have been cancelled, but defied cancellation and lasted as long as she did. From 1998 to 2010, that is a pretty good long time to keep a comic book going. A comic that isn't the mainstream Spider-Man, the mainstream X-Men, the mainstream Fantastic Four. That's a pretty good track record for a book that was on its last leg so many times. I'm glad it got a lot of love during the age that it did, and I wish comics were not constantly rebooted. Comics from Marvel, they constantly go to number ones, and it damages the industry in so many ways. I think books that ran long-term, that were allowed to go from 1 to 100 or even 200 and then got retitled, renumbered, I think it did a lot of good, and the best. And it's like I always say, the best thing about a comic that goes on for a long time and trying to get into one, the best thing you can do for yourself is go into that rich backstory and read a book. Anyway, uh, I've gone on for 15 minutes. I think I'm good right now. I'm going to do what I can to promote the hell out of this book because it's they're really good stories. And instead of complaining about bad ones, I'd rather just focus on good ones for now. Okay, so see you guys next time. And if you have any questions, be sure to ask me. I'll, I'll try